Hello! I got my coffee here today, about 350 milliliters of it. Why coffee, you might ask? Well, coffee, because... Caffeine! I honestly don't know why I do this stupid stuff. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. How to move the sun? Stellar engines. Now, I thought about this for about 15 seconds. And I cannot picture a way to, for humanity to move the sun. Now, I can imagine natural ways to move the sun with black holes and other things, you know, interfering with it gravitationally. And of course, the sun is always moving in relation to the center of our galaxy. But I can't think of a way for us to move the sun. I can't wait to hear what they have in store for us. Nothing in the universe is static. In the Milky Way, billions of stars mm -hmm. orbit the galactic Yeah, everything's center. moving. Some, like our sun, are pretty consistent, keeping a distance of around 30,000 light years from the galactic center, completing an orbit every 30,000 light years? Million years? This dance is... I wonder how many times the sun has actually orbited the Milky Way. I don't know how old the sun is, but I'm guessing by the fact that it takes 230 million years to orbit. It probably only has ever orbited, what, a handful of times? It couldn't be that many, right? It's not an orderly ballet, more like a skating rink filled with drunk toddlers. <laughs> this I would pay to see a skating rink full of drunk that toddlers. The neighborhood is constantly changing, with stars moving hundreds of kilometers every second. Uh -huh. Only the vast distances between objects protect us from the dangers out there. But we might get unlucky in the future. At some point, we could encounter a star going supernova. That would be bad. We watched a video on that. And showering Earth with asteroids. If mm -hmm. something like this were to happen, we would likely know thousands, if not millions of years in advance. And of course, we, we have all of our eggs in one basket right now, in terms of all of humanity is on the Earth. Our whole solar system out of the way. How? How would you do that? To move the solar system, we need a stellar engine, a megastructure used to steer a star through the galaxy. It's the kind of thing that might be built by an advanced civilization with Dyson Sphere level technology that's thinking about their future. So type one civilization. But how do we or is that a type two? move the hundreds of thousands of objects in the solar system? The good news is we can ignore all of that. My guess is if you just move the sun, everything else will follow, right? Because it's all gravitationally bound. It depends, of course, how we move the sun, because if we use something with great gravity to do so, that gravity will obviously impact the things around the sun as well as the sun. But they're talking about an engine of some sort, and I am totally baffled. By what they mean by that we only need to move the sun all the other stuff is glued to it by gravity and we'll follow it wherever it decides to go yep there are lots of ideas about what a stellar engine might look like and how it would work we've picked two grounded in our current understanding of physics that could be built in theory the simplest kind of stellar engine is the Shkadov thruster a giant mirror it works on the same principle as a rocket like rocket fuel the photons released as solar radiation carry momentum. Not a lot, but a bit. For example, if an astronaut turned mm. on a flashlight in space, it would push them backwards very, very slowly. <laughs> a stellar engine will work a little okay. better than a flashlight because the sun produces a lot of photons. The basic idea of the Shkadov thruster is to reflect up to half of the solar radiation to create thrust and slowly push the sun where we want it to go. In order for the Shkadov thruster to um, work, it must be kept in the same place, not orbiting the sun. Yeah. Although the sun's gravity will try to pull it in, it would be supported by radiation pressure, which props the mirror up. Okay, so that being said, I would argue that you would have to worry about the radiation pushing the mirror out too far, right? Because if you, if you do end up achieving a perfect balance between the gravitational pull of the sun and the radiation that's pushing on the mirror, wouldn't that just kind of cancel itself out? 
It wouldn't move the sun, would it? This means the mirror would have to be very light, made of micron-thin reflecting foil from materials like aluminium alloys. The mirror's shape is important too. Enveloping the sun in a giant spherical shell wouldn't work because that would refocus light back to the Energy to push the sun has to come from somewhere, right? Problems. Instead, we use a parabola, which sends most of the photons around the sun and in the same direction, which maximizes thrust. To prevent accidentally burning or freezing Earth with too much <laughs> or too little sunlight, Important the only safe place to build a Shkadov thruster is over the sun's poles. This means we can only move the sun vertically in the plane of the solar system okay. and one direction in the Milky Way, which limits our travel options a bit. But that is basically it. For a civilization capable of building a Dyson Sphere, this is a relatively simple endeavor. Well, couldn't we turn that into a type of solar farm where we are actually harnessing the energy? So similar to where we saw like a Dyson Swarm. Not complicated, just very hard to build. At full throttle, the solar system could probably be moved by about 100 light years over 230 million years. Over a few billion years, it gives us near complete control over the sun's orbit in the galaxy. Hmm. But in the short term, this might not be fast enough to dodge a deadly supernova. True, true. That's why we thought we could do better. So we asked our astrophysicist friend... If anyone knows how the Skardov thruster somehow generates enough thrust to actually move the sun, please let me know because I'm, I'm quite confused on that part. I get that there's the solar radiation coming from the sun, and I get that the idea is to reflect that back in the opposite direction, so that way it's all going off on one direction, basically. But how does that actually move the sun? Because you're going to need some energy to keep the mirror where it's supposed to be. And I get that the idea would be to have a balance between gravity and the radiation, but even if you do achieve that, how is that moving the sun? Maybe I'm missing something obvious, but if anyone knows, please explain it in more details because I, I would love to hear that explained out a little bit better. If he could design a faster stellar engine for this video. He did, and wrote a paper about it that's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. You can find it in our sources document. I love how they share the We're sources. We're going to call our new stellar engine the Kaplan Thruster. It works a lot like a traditional rocket. Shoot exhaust one way to push yourself the other. Okay. It's a large space station platform powered by a Dyson sphere that gathers matter from the sun to power nuclear fusion. Come on, that's ingenious. That's an ingenious idea. You have all this fuel. More than you could ever possibly want. But my question still remains on how does that move the sun? If we're stealing fuel from the sun into the rocket, and then the rocket is generating a thrust, how do we move the sun with that? The rocket needs to push the sun somehow. Maybe I'm just missing something super obvious here? It shoots out a very fast jet of particles at nearly 1% the speed of light out of the solar system. A second jet pushes the sun along like a tugboat. The Kaplan thruster requires a lot of fuel, millions of tons per second. So you have jets in both directions, but presumably the jet that's pushing forward towards the sun would be stronger than the one needed to keep the sun at bay. Am I following that correctly? To gather this fuel, our thruster uses very large electromagnetic fields to funnel hydrogen and helium from the solar wind into the engine. The solar wind alone doesn't provide enough fuel though, and that's where the Dyson Sphere comes in. Using its power, sunlight can be refocused to the surface of the sun. This heats small regions to extreme temperatures, lifting billions of tons of mass off the Because the sun's not hot enough. This mass can be collected and separated into hydrogen and helium. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this makes sense. The helium is burned explosively in thermonuclear fusion reactors. A jet of radioactive oxygen at a temperature of nearly a billion degrees is expelled and becomes our primary source of propulsion from our star engine okay. to prevent the engine from just crashing into the sun it needs to balance itself yeah to do this we accelerate the collected hydrogen with electromagnetic fields using particle accelerators and shoot a jet okay. back at the sun this balances the thruster and transfers the thrust of our engine back to the sun 
In as little as a million years, this engine can move the sun by 50 light years, more than enough to dodge a supernova. At full throttle, the solar system can be completely redirected in its galactic orbit in 10 million years. Hmm. But wait, will we use up the sun this way? I mean, the sun is huge. It's so massive that even billions of tons of material will barely scratch the surface. Yeah. In fact, this megastructure will actually extend our sun's life since lower mass stars burn slower, <laughs> keeping the solar system inhabitable for many more billions of years. So not only do we gain control over the path of our solar system and the direction of it, but we actually increase the life of our sun. I mean, that sounds like a win-win to me. <laughs> This stuff is just mind-blowing. With a Kaplan thruster, we could turn the entire solar system into our spaceship. For example, by orbiting backwards in the galaxy and colonizing hundreds or thousands of stars as mm. we pass by them. It may even be possible to escape the galaxy entirely and expand beyond the Milky Way. Ah. Stellar engines are the kind of machines built mm -hmm. by civilizations thinking not in terms of years or decades, but eons. Yeah, Since which is where we need to start getting as a species. A stellar engine could allow the far future descendants of humans to travel to other stars without ever having to venture into the terrifying dark abyss of interstellar space. That's a really good point that I hadn't thought of, is if you can actually take control of the path of our solar system, you can use that to move our entire solar system closer to another one. Now, like, say, Alpha Centauri, if it's in the right direction and we can direct ourselves that way, Alpha Centauri is, you know, could become a lot closer and actually feasible to travel with a rocket or some sort of spaceship in a human lifetime. And that could be how we end up colonizing other star systems is just by moving our star system from one to one. And then basically as you do that, you keep repeating this process per star system and we spread out like crazy. That's probably actually the most feasible interstellar travel that I've heard of so far. Although I do have my reservations about propelling the sun and how feasible that actually is with the particle accelerator. But I'm also not a scientist, so. Until we build a stellar engine, we're adrift and subject to the whims of the galactic sea. We may not like where it leads us. Maybe our descendants will set sail and become an interstellar species for millions of years to come. That'd be really cool. Wow, what a thought, a stellar engine. They completely came out of left field on this one for me. I had no idea how we could potentially propel the sun and change the course of our solar system. Both of the items that they outlined made sense to me, but the feasibility is still in question. For the first option, I'm still very confused how that would actually propel our sun. I don't understand that. I'm not a scientist. I don't have a science background. I'm just interested by this stuff. But if anyone with a science background or more knowledge than me knows, please feel free. I would love to know more in the comments. The second one makes a little bit more sense, but I have a lot of reservations on a particle accelerator creating a particle beam that could actually push the sun. Even if we do get enough thrust and all that. To me, I can't explain exactly why I have reservations about that, but something about that just sounds a little fishy to me. So I'm not sure that I fully believe that that would actually work. Anyway, top-notch video from these guys. Great production, great voice, great music, sound effects, animation. Everything's amazing. I love these guys, and I can't wait for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you have such a wonderful day. Please leave a like if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and we will see you later.